my name's Ricky, and I, I'm Tanu. Uh, big, big T. There's two Tanus in the band. So, um, yeah, I'm one of them. The other one's not here at the moment. And we <laughs> formed the band from Chaos Fair uh, nine years ago. Yeah, it's been about that. It's been yeah. about nine years. Very good, mate. And then. There's plenty going on with KS3 at the moment, but we're going to start on your new single, Chainbreaker, which is premiered by a heavy on December 15th. So it's been a while between drinks, guys. It's great to hear new music from the band. Yeah, um, it's been, it has been a long progress, but we wanted to take our time with it. Um, with EPs, you can sort of slap out a few songs and, and a video and tour and, it's a it's a much quicker process, but with an album, you know, it just it takes a long time, you know, and and chain break is part of it, you know. We've had a lot of this music ready for a long time, but you know, it's not hasn't been right to release it. Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit more about chain breaker from a musical point of view and what you were going for with it. Uh, well, we just wanted to create, uh, you know, something with a lot of groove, a lot of uh, emotion in it. And something to really, you know, get the, the crowd, you know, moshing pretty much. Just uh, it's just a heavy song, you know, and the, the songs are quality as well. So I wanted to, you know, capture that the song. So, yeah, it's Everyone had their part to play in it, you know, from drums to bass to guitars, rhythm to guitar. And, you know, it took me ages to write the song as well because um, I wanted it to be right. <laughs> so, yeah so how would you say it differs from what people have heard from chaosphere in the past um i don't think it's really really different it's probably a little bit more polished maybe and probably a little bit more clearer um whereas in the past we sort of used to play get songs together and then we were more focused on playing live yeah um instead of actually doing full production in a studio and thinking about it, you know? So in that, in that case, the music comes out a little bit more defined, I think. Um, there's multi, there's a thousand ways to write a song, mate, but you know, um, we've definitely tried a few, oh, yeah. a few different ways, especially with Tane and Tane and Leon. Yeah, we, we, we spent a lot more time in the studio than Know, nothing was rough you know, it was very, it was, it was instead of like writing the song in the garage <laughs> and then yeah. and then going to Nick and sort of like smacking it all out in a day we were actually you know studio producing this this album as you, as you might want to say you know which I think you hear better things yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. It's a lot, lot more polished yeah. yeah. And you had a couple of different songs to choose from to release as your first single, so why choose Chainbreaker? Um, look, I just thought it had a... It's got some good nuts to it. And I just think that um, our older fans will appreciate it. Um, I mean, not saying that it's not... Throughout the album, there's probably five really, really heavy songs in the album. Maybe six. Um, but we just thought it was a good one to really, um, people could catch on to the lyrics, they can get into the groove and really sort of, you know, be a part of it with us, you know. And you're also That's releasing cool. an awesome music video to go with the song, so tell us what's going on there and the meaning behind it. Oh, sorry, what was that? Well, you're releasing an awesome music video to go with the song. So tell us a bit more about that and the meaning well, behind it. Yeah, so um, obviously the song's about um, uh, upbringing. And um, back in the day, mum struggled a lot. Um, and obviously me and my little bro, we were we were this, you know, we had to go with mum, whatever happened. Um, and it sort of, it was pretty sort of gnarly, you know. Um, and the video really captures it, and it really captures the emotion of uh, that kind of domestic kind of violence styles and living with it, and then also 
breaking away from it. Breaking the chains. Yeah. And sort of like, you know, making a decision to up and leave, grab the kids, let's go, we're out of here. And pretty much move to a whole brand new city, brand new schools, brand new everything, and pretty much start your life over again. You know? um, and live in women's refuges and all sorts of pretty, not really nice things, but um, credit to her. Um, she made that decision and, you know, it, it, it was full of fruit, you know, like we, me and my young, my brother, we turned out pretty good and because of it, you know. Um, so that's what the song's about, Chain Breaker, and it's just breaking those those badass cycles, you know, and sometimes when you're in love, you don't actually realise that you're in those situations because you're in love, you know what I mean? And until you step out of it and go, well, that's pretty hectic, you know, and... Um, yeah, but some, something coming from a positive coming from a, a negative, basically. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah it's essentially the, the plot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jake Breaker also features something never heard from KS here before in the form of some clean vocals. Like, why decide that now's the right time to introduce that element to your music? Um, from from my earlier band, uh, Esophagus, that me and Little Anna used to get in. Um, we, we, 20 years ago, we used to have clean vocals through our old music. Um, and when we first started Chaos Fair, obviously with Big Tane jumping in, he comes from a black metal background. He's playing a band called From the Dark. Um, when we mashed the two styles together, it was just like a pretty much death metal band. The element's always been there. It just we just after doing our EP before, and it was time to sort of like play around with a few things, I guess. And and one thing's having clean vocals, but trying to pull them off so they sound good. That's a that's another problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so along those it's lines, like, this is directed at you, Ricky. Like you've played Chain Breaker live a couple of times now, so. How'd you go the first couple of times when it came to doing the clean singing in front of an audience for the first time? Like, were you nervous? Yeah. Um, I was actually wondering what, what the, uh, what the locals would think of it. Um, but I try and sing it with a bit of a twang to it. So it's actually sort of sounds sort of groovy, I guess. It's not, you know, um, like, yeah, it's not bloody. Not bloody opera. No, that's right. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's it's not yeah. super bloody power vocals. You so know, it's sort of kind of wrecked a bit as well. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's definitely daunting, but knowing that it, what I'm hearing back as it comes back to me, I'm like, well, that's what I intended it to sound like. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Chain Breaker. Like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, is the first single from your debut album, which will be out sometime next year. So, is it a good representation of what to expect? I think so. Um, yeah. Going definitely. definitely going forward in our write, writing processes, um, you you probably will find more songs similar to that. Yeah. There are some quite different as well. There's yeah. A lot of diversity in this album, which I hope people know a lot. I think we will appeal to a pretty broad you know, cross section of people. I mean, which is there might be one song we might get crucified over, but <laughs> you know how you know it's quite of a mal it's almost a radio song, you know. Um, and just in the past, you hear bands, heavy bands, come out and do a, a mellow track and they just get crucified, but. I mean, it is what it is. That's right. When yeah, we like it too. <laughs> when you're writing it, you don't think about all them baggers, you know, you just think, oh, well, you know. Uh, but um, yeah, there's a good good variety of stuff on there, and, uh, you know, I think it shows how, <clears throat> how sort of diverse we're getting in our, in our repertoire and, and the sounds, you yeah. know, kind of experimenting a bit more with different stuff. Mm -hmm. 
the good thing yeah. too is we've still got our old tunes that you know like that people love and know so being able to play some of those songs with our new songs as well is going to be great you know for for our yeah for every for whatever kind of gigs we're playing you know it yeah. depends what kind of gig you're playing mm. you're playing full of full um, fresh well i think you pick your song accordingly you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. A good collection of songs to choose from. So yeah, cool. I suppose the big question is, guys, I will old school fans of KSV are like the new music. I think so, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, no, that's to be decided. I, I, I think that will work. <laughs> we certainly hope so, you know. Yeah. yeah, we've tried really hard on it. Yeah. You know, we've definitely put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Um, that's and a lot of time and money. Um, obviously we don't make no money back, um, like all the other um, hardworking bands out there. Not yet. <laughs> um, but yeah, look, we, we really do hope they like it and um, and get on board with it. And yeah, that's all we can hope for. Yeah. You know, we, we spent a lot of time on it. So, you yeah, know, hopefully um, everyone will do it. Yeah. Uh, the other big news for KSV is your recent signing to new label X Music, which is run by Tim McLean Smith, who was at Sony Records for 20 years and now works for Better Noise Music. So, firstly, congratulations, yeah. guys. It's, it's a reward for effort. Oh, yeah. No, well, thanks. thanks. Yeah. So, I was yeah, really um, happy that I'm being on board. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, Chris. No um, worries, guys. <laughs> we, didn't, uh, we didn't, you know, like, as people mention record labels and you think, oh, you know, what are they going to try and do and screw us over and such and such. But um, going through it, it's actually a pretty workable uh, uh, contract. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. workable. Uh, it's good for both both parties. Um, and with, with his experience and contacts, I think it, it can only be uh, better for, for Chaos there all around. Oh, definitely. Um, he's definitely an industry veteran, you know, and he's a really good bloke as well. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 it helps. Yeah, it helps think... when you can, when you actually like the people you're working with. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's important. And um, yeah. yeah, no, he's an excellent, excellent dude. It's, it's kind of a, a risk for him as well. Um, you yeah. know, like his the bands he sort of plays with at the moment aren't really heavy metal bands. Um, so. I guess he's taking a risk as well. Yeah. No, we're but, pretty pretty grateful that he's giving us this opportunity. You know? Yeah, it's funny though, like you say that because with X Music, he hasn't really got many heavy bands with anyone. You look at what he does with Better Noise Music. He's got Asking Alexandria and Bad Wolves and The Who, Five Finger Death Punch. Oh, you know, he actually does 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 know a bit about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah on Better Music, yeah, like, um, yeah, definitely. But yeah. just on Motley Crue, yeah, there, yeah that's road. good. So he's definitely got the runs on the board. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. No, there's there's some big bands that are part of that bit of music label. Well, so. so hopefully we knock them off off their perch one day soon, eh? Oh, I can see how that. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dreams are free, you know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, Casby's always had a reputation of being a brutal live band, guys, and you returned to the stage this year for a couple of shows already. But is a new stage show equal to or better than before? Um, that's still decided, mate. Um, but we're working it's on always, it. it's always a work in progress. Um, beforehand we focused, like I said, we focused a lot on our live sound and, um, we didn't really put much into the, you know, the footwork. Um, this time around we've had time with that. Now we've got our music. You know what I mean? We've got time to sort of work on intros and, and how that theme go live. In our life so that's, that's what we're doing so um so yeah look we get a bit more effort in there and um and hopefully um hopefully you know it used to be easier when i had dreadlocks that's for sure but um no, i don't have them anymore so <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's his essential ingredient to a good live show but no no but for me you know doing my part i used to, to just wiggle my head and <laughs> when you head shake your ass and you're away yeah and <laughs> scream out like a bloody lunatic and you know but um yeah 
No, we're, we're, we're practicing a lot at the moment, rehearsing a lot. So, yeah, yeah. and um, working on, you know, getting our, our live show sorted for the, you know, the next year. Cool. Yeah. And your next gig actually is at Alternate Festival at the Backroom Annerley on February 3rd, alongside bands like Orpheus, Amiga, Piston Fist, Deadweight 80, yeah. Armored Earth, We the Hollow, 12 Gauge Rampage. So there's some pretty big bands yeah. there, man. It's heavy as fuck lineup. Yeah, looking at it, it's definitely, um, I've been, yeah, we've been looking at it for a while now. It's been, uh, but it's good that it's actually finally come to light now and uh, we'll give a nice, a big, big, big day out there, day and night. Um, I think he's still announcing another, oh, one of the actors, might be 20 bands all up. Oh, this is uh, a good lot of, so. But yeah, after that, we're, um, we, we don't know. Well, we've got to set our direction um, of obviously touring and um, going and hitting a few of our favourite little spots like Newcastle and Sydney and Melbourne. And yeah. We'll be working with X Music as well. You know, yeah, working with them, collaborating with them. And, you know, working on our, our schedule for next year to coincide with the album and singles and everything, video releases. Exciting times. Yeah, I think we've yeah, got it's going to be good. Uh, four singles to release. Yeah, we've got a, got a busy year next year. Got a lot to do. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll so go and get some sleep and get yourselves ready for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Beautiful, guys. Yeah. All right, well, thanks very much for your time. Um, Chainbreaker is out. It's Friday, December 15th. Heavy's going to premiere it at 8 a.m. on Friday morning, I believe, and then she'll be available for the public not long after. So best of luck with everything, guys, and we'll catch up soon. Yeah.